In this video, I'm going to take enthalpy change of solution a step further, and we're going to compare the enthalpy change of solution of potassium fluoride, KF, with rubidium fluoride, RBF. So you can see on the whiteboard there, I've got these strips of graph paper with all the different particles written up. And the first thing we're going to do is we'll just um, factor in the influence of the ionic charge and the ionic radius into the enthalpy changes and see where we get from that. So at the moment, the cards are kind of on the same level. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide them up and down the whiteboard to try and reflect the relative differences in the enthalpy changes. So the first thing to appreciate is the common enthalpy change, which is obviously the enthalpy change of hydration of the fluoride ion. So that's this change here, F minus gas to F minus aqueous. And you can see in the black KF side, we've got F minus gas to F minus aqueous. So the best thing to do, we'll keep those at the same level. So the difference between these two compounds is obviously the metal ion. We've got a potassium ion in KF, but we've got a rubidium ion in RBF. The ionic charge is the same, both one plus, so we can forget about that factor. It's obviously to do with the ionic radius. So which ion has the smallest radius? It's the potassium ion. So this will influence the enthalpy change of hydration. So it's going to be the K plus gas to K plus aqueous. This gap here is going to be wider than this gap here. Let's just shift these to reflect that. Obviously the other enthalpy change that is affected is the lattice enthalpy. So the lattice enthalpy of Kf, because of the smaller ionic radius of the K plus ion, will be more exothermic than the lattice enthalpy of RBF. So I'm going to, I'll keep that there and I'm going to shove that down here. So side by side now on the board, we've got both of the cycles, the Born Harbor cycles for the enthalpy change of solution, which you can see is represented by this level here. So it's the solid ionic lattice going to the aqueous ions. And we've got the same there, of course. Right, we'll take it up a notch now. You can see in orange there, I've included some extra information. So we are being told that the enthalpy change of solution for potassium fluoride is minus 15 kilojoules per mole. And for rubidium fluoride, it's minus 24 kilojoules per mole. So the best way to think about it, I think, is we just think about the this level between the solid and the aqueous ions is a gap. So there's obviously a smaller gap between potassium fluoride solid and the aqueous ions than between rubidium fluoride solid and its aqueous ions. And that's given us these, this is more exothermic because this is a bigger gap. So what could have caused this sort of shrinking of the gap, if you like? So remember, when we compared the two to each other, we factored in the ionic size of the K plus ion versus the RB plus ion. So what it looks like has happened is the lattice enthalpy has increased proportionately more than the hydration enthalpy. And what that's done is it's narrowed the gap between the solid and the aqueous ions. So a possible reason for this difference in the enthalpy change of solution is because 
for potassium fluoride, the lattice enthalpy seems to be being more significant than the hydration enthalpy of the potassium ion. Now, just as a point of comparison, I'm going to do the same treatment, but this time it's with lithium chloride versus sodium chloride. So obviously the first thing we'll do is we'll put the common enthalpy change in and that's going to be the hydration of the chloride ion. So we'll put that in and we'll keep the gap the same because these are the same enthalpy changes effectively. The next thing to appreciate is the effect of the ion size of the metal ion because this is the variable. So we've got the small Li plus ion versus the larger Na plus ion. So this is going to have um, a higher lattice enthalpy. So we need a wider gap here than we're going to have for the sodium chloride. So if I put that one, I'll probably move these about anyway, but we'll just, just to make this point, let's have that there. And we need the lithium chloride further away because this is a great lattice enthalpy. So we'll put that there. The enthalpy change of hydration for the lithium ion, going to the lithium aqueous ion, will also be greater, more exothermic, and so the gap for this change, we'll put that one in now, needs to be wider than the gap for this change here. So I'll just set that in like that. Before we go any further, I just need to share this information with you now. So this kind of thing would be given in the question. The enthalpy change of solution in kilojoules per mole for lithium chloride is minus 37.2, whereas for sodium chloride it's plus 3.9. So we've got an exothermic process and an endothermic process. And the awkward part of the question would be to suggest reasons for the difference. So the easier part, if you like, is factoring in the relative ionic sizes and the ionic charges and their knock-on effect on enthalpy changes of hydration and lattice enthalpy. The difficult bit is then trying to piece that together to come up with a reason for the data that's on this little whiteboard now. So we need to reset this now to reflect the information we've got up in orange there. So lithium chloride minus 37.2 so yep that, that diagram the way that's set up is fine the one in green for sodium chloride well that needs to be um, reset so what we need to do is we need to have the ionic solid below the aqueous ions and that gives us when we come when we draw the cycle which I'll do in a second that's going to give us the correct um, profile for the cycle so we'll concentrate on the reason why the lithium chloride enthalpy change of solution is exothermic. So remember the impact of the positive ion, this smaller lithium ion compared to the larger sodium ion. That's going to increase the lattice enthalpy, make it more exothermic, and it's going to make the hydration of the lithium ion more exothermic. Now, in the previous example, it was the lattice enthalpy that seemed to be um, having the, the greater impact. Now, if that was the case in, in this, let's just make them level. If that was the case here, then, yep, they both increase, but this one kind of overtakes it. And we could, it looks like we could end up with an endothermic enthalpy change of solution. But because we know, we're actually told that this is the case, minus 37.2, so it's exothermic, that means that the hydration enthalpy for the lithium ion must have increased more relative to the lattice enthalpy. And so we get this situation. So what's that telling us? 
in the case of the chloride, it looks like the hydration enthalpy seems to be more significant than the lattice enthalpy.